Roast your stogie like a yogi, the missing piece of cigar enthusiasm. About the author, Jason Slater first got into cigars while deployed to Afghanistan in 2011. After serving as a medic for 20 years in the United States Air Force, he founded Kingfisher Leaf Culture, where he continues to pursue the art of blending his two passions, smoking cigars and practicing meditation. Jason lives in Omaha, Nebraska with his wife and three children. For more information, email jason.slagert at gmail.com. Preface, there is a secret among cigar aficionados. It is the ultimate reason that people enjoy smoking cigars. It has nothing to do with the flavors of the tobacco or the beverage with which it is being paired or even the good souls with which the experience is being shared. When a person decides to smoke a cigar, they are consciously committing to sitting and breathing deeply for one to two hours. What words come to mind when you think of consciously sitting and breathing deeply for such a period of time? Since the time of the Mayans, roasting a cigar has always been a meditative pastime. During a typical sitting, one often finds oneself letting the mind go completely blank for unknown periods of time. Similarly, in mindfulness, this is sometimes called no mind and is a positive result of the practice. In deeper forms of meditation, altered states and levels of consciousness such as samadhi are a desired fruit of the practice. It is believed that the Mayans may have even experienced hallucinations while smoking their rolled tobacco. Must have been some ligero. On some level, I am not really suggesting that anything about cigar smoking change since it is already a qualitatively meditative and relaxing experience. On another level, however, I believe that power flows where intention grows. What if you could be more intentional during your cigar smoking? What if, together, we could make this wonderful hobby even more rewarding simply by expanding our awareness a bit? This is the aim of this book. This is what Kingfisher Leaf Culture is all about. And this is why we say, Roast Your Stogie Like a Yogi. Chapter 1. How to Roast Your Stogie Like a Yogi. Mantras. In the spiritual community, many tools are used to create a desired effect in meditation. One such tool is mantra. Originally, mantras were syntactic devices used to give the mind something to do while meditating. Otherwise, the mind would continually disrupt leaving the meditator feeling fruitless. Repeating a phrase, whether mentally or audibly, can be like giving a baby a rattle to play with in order to bypass the mind and experience stillness. Another such tool for giving the monkey a toy is witnessing respirations. When commanded to watch the breath, the mind-made self quickly begins observing the air going in and out. With the monkey mind out of the way, bliss becomes more accessible. Cigars can work exactly like a mantra or watching the breath. This is because the mind easily focuses on the tactile activities of the cigar experience. Of course, without setting any intention, this necessarily linear process can easily be mindless rather than mindful. Often, without realizing it, however, cigar smokers find themselves in a state of bliss consciousness that actually has very little to do with the effects of tobacco and alcohol on the nervous system. Rather, I believe it has much more to do with sitting for an extended period of time with an intention to feel good, breathing slowly and deeply, and letting the outside world drift away for a while. 7 Easy Steps to the Perfect Stogie Number 1. Cigar Selection Each session must begin by selecting a cigar. Whether gazing into your carefully stocked humidor or shopping at your local retailer, selecting the right cigar for the present moment is truly an intuitive decision. You may not know why the stick you chose is the right one, but you can easily stand by your decision. That's just how intuition works, and that is exactly how we stogie yogis begin. Number two, cigar cutting. Once you have selected the right cigar, it's cutting time. You might go with the V-shaped cut, or you might require a guillotine-style cutter if you went with a larger gauge stick. You want to get it right the first time, so you take your time. Whether you prefer using your old keychain punch, or biting off the cap like some kind of feral ape, making the cut is an essential step in the process of roasting your stogie. Number 3. Cigar Lighting Then there's the lighting of the cigar, or as veterans call it, toasting. The proper way to light a cigar is to toast the edges of the wrapper prior to sucking any air through it. This is done while rotating the cigar in order to encourage an even burn, allowing only the heat to touch the cigar rather than the flame. Done properly, this can take several minutes and can be a rather enjoyable part of the process. As many experienced enthusiasts will tell you, if you fail to light your cigar properly at the beginning, 
It can burn unevenly, ruining the entire experience. Taking one's time at the beginning not only enhances the overall experience of the cigar, but can be an excuse to practice mindfulness, which is the opposite of multitasking. Number four, cigar pairing. If you're going to roast a fine cigar, you'll want to pair it with something to keep your mouth moist between puffs. This part can make or break the experience, but with a few basic tips, you can avoid pouring that expensive Imperial Marshmallow Stout down the drain because it is ruining your even more expensive Cohiba. Ultimately, though, it is truly about personal preference and being open to trial and error. One thing to consider, though, is on a scale of one to craft beer enthusiast, for example, how enthusiastic are you? If you are really excited about trying some new beverage or are concerned about not charring something special from the cellar, consider tasting the cigar for a while before you light your cigar. This will at least ensure that your palate isn't demolished by the char of lighting your cigar before you've had a chance to properly taste it. In some cases, this may also help you realize that you have opened the wrong drink so that you're free to select the more appropriate whistle wetter. As a beginner, though, it is best to try as many different pairings as possible. Try teas, coffees, lagers, IPAs, stouts, imperial IPAs, imperial stouts, Belgian triples, Belgian-style quadruples, barley wines, a mojito, an old-fashioned, bourbon, rye, scotch, Japanese whiskey, and ice water with lime. Personally, I am a scotch man mostly because I have never had the experience of scotch ruining a cigar. Number five, cigar setting. As in meditation, or going on a road trip, or making love, or doing mushrooms, you would not want to smoke a cigar with just anyone. Choosing one's company, even if that means going solo, can truly make or break a cigar experience. Personally, I would much rather enjoy a fine cigar alone than with someone I find less than pleasant. So plan your session well, and be picky if necessary, as each person brings their own energy field to the table. I'm speaking of one's dominant vibration, the frequency that each person cultivates and emits at all times, regardless of one's awareness of this fact. Remember, to smoke a cigar is to commit to one to two hours of sitting and breathing deeply. You don't want to be stuck wasting an expensive cigar with low-quality company, so choose well. Number six, cigar burning. Every cigar is different. Some cigars have a tight draw, requiring more effort to keep it lit. Others may require a bit of finessing to find that sweet spot. Nobody enjoys drawing that red-hot cherry heat sensation into the mouth from puffing too much on a loose-draw cigar. Some cigars are so well made that the ash hangs on right up into the very end, while some seem to ash every few minutes. Some cigars are spicy and complex, while others range from mild to bland, but each cigar represents the intention to sit and breathe. At this point, it really doesn't matter if you are sipping scotch or espresso, or whether you are roasting solo on your back porch or enjoying a social event. As the cigar burns, all worries melt away. At the deepest level, all that exists in this perfect moment is me and my cigar. Look around a cigar event or lounge and notice the looks on everyone's faces. There is something poetic about the controlled blowing of smoke, the careful holding of these beautiful handmade delicacies, and the ideas that such a bliss-charged atmosphere suggests. Among the themes of class, culture, sophistication, enjoying the fruits of one's labors, and sharing together are more subtle ideas such as abundance, joy, non-resistance, and appreciating the here and now. Number 7. Cigar Ambassadorship How I behave with a cigar in my hands casts light on each member of today's cigar society, what I lovingly call leaf culture. Imagine how a nursing mother at a park might feel if some ignorant cigar smoker was allowing his smoke to blow in her direction. Or imagine if that same mother were to notice used cigars littered about the ground. Or imagine if the worst behaving people in your town were all cigar smokers. We owe it to one another to carry ourselves with self-respect and dignity while participating in leaf culture in order to preserve and protect this beloved pastime. While popularity always ebbs and flows, there seems to be an overgrowing agenda to lump cigars in with all types of smokers. In my mind would be a crime, as cigar smokers tend to be some of the most classy citizens I have ever met. Stogie Culture 
Psychology. In the busy world in which we live, opportunities to really take our time and enjoy the moment are tragically few and far between. I think that is why so many people today are drawn to leaf culture. I know that is precisely why I always look forward to my next cigar. I have always said it is not about the cigar itself, but what it represents. A commitment to sit and breathe for at least an hour. Carving out a chunk of day to simply be. No compulsive thinking, no mindless doing, no repetitive planning, no more mind-numbing meetings, and no more stress hormones flooding the bloodstream. Leaf culture is about intentionality. While a good beer or whiskey, a good book, and some good company are optional, checking in with yourself and enjoying the now is truly an essential element of modern cigar enthusiasm. Physiology. While countless studies have been conducted on the benefits of yoga, mindfulness, and meditation, most people would not consider cigars to be in the same categories as healthy living or enlightenment culture. This has to do with the stigma associated with all tobacco products due to fierce campaigns which has tragically lumped cigars in with all other tobacco products. In the same way that people, rather than delineating between simple processed carbohydrates, e.g. potato chips, and whole plant complex carbohydrates, e.g. sweet potatoes, conflate both as merely carbs, calling them either good or bad, instead of cultivating an understanding of the two, People also conflate highly processed, machine-made tobacco products with their whole-leaf, handmade counterparts. While cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes has been one of the mantras of the broad-stroked anti-smoking campaigns of our time, no one has ever been able to deny that cigars are a safer alternative to cigarettes, cigarillos, and other machine-made products. This is common sense, as not only are cigars never to be inhaled, but cigar smokers tend to not be customers of the mainstream tobacco companies. This is especially significant when you consider the differences in muscle memory. Cigar smokers versus cigarette smokers. Cigarette smokers, after sealing their lips around a cigarette, actively inhale air through the cigarette into their airway, ensuring that every bit of smoke makes it into their lungs. The first thing that a cigar smoker does, on the other hand, is take a deep breath, completely sealing off the lungs. Next, the cigar smoker gently puffs on the cigar like a straw, drawing some smoke into the mouth, while the throat remains completely sealed off. Finally, the cigar smoker exhales all air. Done correctly, no smoke is ever introduced into the lungs. Both are drastically different qualitative experiences involving precisely opposite muscle memories, which directly affect the overall wellness, yet both are conflated as smoking. Moreover, while the typical cigarette smoker buys cartons per month and smokes packs per day slash week, your average cigar aficionado spends between $5 to $20 on a single stick, which is usually only busted out on a special occasion. This is not unlike comparing a whiskey enthusiast with a person who drinks cases of cheap beer. The overall experience, including the physiological factors, are truly night and day. While empty arguments are often made touting the strength, i.e. nicotine, of one cigar versus a single cigarette, as well as the alcohol volume of high-quality whiskey versus a mainstream lager that ends in the word light, the reality is that the qualitative experience between the two is frankly apples and oranges. Just as your occasional scotch sipper should not be easily compared to his or her greasy, beer-bellied counterpart, a stogie yogi is nothing like someone who is addicted to smoking cigarettes. This is where education is crucial, since how we do something is what usually colors the quality of an experience. For example, how one participates in public demonstration is what delineates between a rioting criminal from a peaceful protester. Apples and oranges. During meditation, as a practitioner breathes deeply and slowly, this is well known to have a positive effect on the cardiovascular system. As the respirations slow down, so does the heart rate. And as the heart muscle beats more slowly, the pressure exerted on the arterial walls is lowered, producing an overall therapeutic and preventative effect. Precisely the same thing happens when you sit and smoke a cigar. After you take in a deep breath to seal off the throat, you then begin to puff on the cigar like a straw. This space is the pause between the inhale and the exhale, 
and happens to be an essential aspect of pranayama, which can assist with lowering the respiration rate. During this space, you are holding your breath for a few seconds. Then comes the exhale, where every bit of air is expelled from the lungs and the mouth prior to inhaling again. After a few normal breaths, you do it again, and over time, you will produce a therapeutic effect on the cardiovascular system, as in meditation. Farm to Ashtray When you smoke a fine, handmade cigar, you are encouraged to learn exactly where it came from and what went into making it. Perhaps the filler was cultivated under the sun in Honduras. Maybe the binder and wrapper leaves were proudly grown by a family in Nicaragua. Maybe it contains young Ligera leaves, making for a much bolder cigar. By what process were the leaves cured, and how many years did they spend fermenting? How many years has the particular heritage seed line been cultivated and preserved? By the time that a cigar hits your lips, the excellence that has gone into crafting each unique product, while it may be measured in years and man-hours, is truly priceless. This is not only because of the curing, fermenting, and manufacturing traditions involved prior to reaching your local shop, but also in the blending and branding. In the same way that a mindful eater might go out of their way to learn where their food on their plate has come from, true cigar enthusiasts can often tell you the story of how each cigar in their humidor was made, where the leaves were grown, and by which family, etc., and what makes each stick special. Cigars are about tradition, commitment to excellence, and pursuing the finer things in life. Cigars, like meditation, are about taking time to enjoy the present moment. Chapter 2. Stogie vs. Yogi The Wrong Way I tend to be an enthusiast about whatever I'm into. It's just the way that I'm wired. When I first started practicing meditation, I jumped in with both feet and began practicing every day. One day, as I was meditating down by the ocean, I decided to try and combine cigar smoking with my practice. It did not go so well. At some point, I began slipping into an altered state and was unaware that I was still roasting my stogie. All I remember is feeling heat in my mouth, tasting ash, and almost falling into the water. I never tried smoking a cigar while meditating ever again. The right way. However, while I don't recommend smoking a cigar while meditating, as it can be unsafe, I do recommend allowing your cigar hobby to be more meditative. You will be amazed at how natural it is to transform this ordinary pastime into one of the most meaningful and inspiring times of your day, week, month, or year, depending on how frequently you like to smoke cigars. Yogi Culture No Roots, No Fruits If you are new to yoga and meditation, it is important to find a simple practice and stick with it over time. After all, within yoga there are six different branches, eight different limbs, four major paths, and innumerable types of meditation techniques within each tradition. This can be confusing when you just want to get your feet wet. Most people are drawn to yoga and meditation because of a universal desire to feel good. This is a very good thing. Underneath our common desire to feel good is an innate compulsion to return to wholeness, which happens to be the very purpose of yoga. This is why we meditate, to reconcile all the parts of ourself, to put ourselves back together again, Personally, I believe this is why some less intentional cigar hangs can feel a bit empty. Just as there are many methods for expansion within each yogic tradition, there are endless methods for practicing meditation. You could spend the rest of your life cherry-picking ideas and practices, but if you never find a home, so to speak, it is unlikely that your life experience will shine with the features of a consistent practice. So, if you want to grow some fruits... You've got to first grow some roots. It has often been said that the reason that we meditate is so that we might be more meditative when we are not meditating. In other words, likewise, the goal is not to become some detached monk on a mountaintop, but to actually integrate what you are practicing into your everyday life. If done correctly, you will be better off in every aspect of your life and you will know that it is due to your daily consistent intentional practice. 
Getting started. While each person must decide for themselves where to begin, I have found that there are several accessible meditations that anyone can begin practicing right now. Seven easy exercises to grow your inner yogi. Three breaths. Just take three breaths right now. I'll wait. Okay, how did it feel? No matter how busy we believe our lives to be, everyone has time to take three deep breaths. Integrating such a practice is as easy as setting a timer on your phone and then being faithful to do it when it goes off. Or, if you want to take it further, imagine how you might feel each day if you took ten deep breaths, three times daily, morning, noon, and night. Just like anything else, you are going to get out of it what you put into it. The more, the better. But never be embarrassed about starting small. We all have to start somewhere. Even one conscious breath is better than zero. Be faithful to your practice daily and watch it grow. Walking meditation. One of my favorite ways to meditate is taking a walk. This can be done in a small room or out in nature. In fact, the setting is irrelevant. The first idea is to be present with each step. Notice the way it feels to be in your left foot and then your right. Notice your breathing. Become aware of your surroundings, but not distracted. Just as you might use some relaxing audio track to meditate, include the sounds around you. See if you can hold space for these sensory inputs without judging, resisting, or wanting them to change. Try and do the same thing with what your eyes are taking in. Always stay alert to the present moment during walking meditations. This is not the time to slip off into an altered state. As you walk, be fully in each step. Hold easy, gentle attention, inner body awareness, if you will. Allow yourself to enjoy the moment. Body scan. This meditation is great to do before falling asleep. Simply lay on your back, eyes closed. Then, beginning with your feet, shine the light of your awareness, noticing whatever physical sensations are happening there. After a few breaths, move upward toward the head into the ankles. Notice whatever phenomena is happening there. Do this until you reach your head. Then, move backward toward the feet. Once proficient, you can add a smile. Smile into each anatomical space, letting go of resistance, tension, etc. Relaxing each part of the body until the whole body is relaxed. Then simply enjoy the experience known as mind awake, body asleep. This kind of practice, if practiced daily, can aid inner healing, personal growth and expansion, etc. Not to mention, is a fantastic way to fall asleep. Mindfulness. Regardless of what you may be doing, Simply allow some part of your attention to observe your breath. Relax your focus a bit and begin to simply take in your surroundings. Notice what the present moment contains for you. Take in the sights, sounds, smells, tastes, and other experiences that are occurring in real time. Notice how you are feeling in your emotional body. Notice if there is any resistance there almost always is. And see if you can let go, even if only a little bit for now. Then go back to whatever you were doing before. Or perhaps you'll want to revisit this delightful practice throughout your day. Integration is key. The more, the better. This activity is perfectly safe, as the goal is to be 100% alert to the present moment. Consider the opposite of this practice to be multitasking, Mindfulness is about being fully with whatever it is that you're doing and connecting with the inherent joy that is the natural fragrance of your very being. Gratitude. Say thank you, either mentally or verbally. Now, say it again, but this time, see if you can really mean it. Continue repeating for a while. The mind may try to focus on specific objects to be grateful for but try and let go of the urge to focus on anything specific. 
just stay with the mantra, thank you, for a little while longer. Note how you were feeling at the beginning of the exercise, and note any changes in your physical body that occurs. See if you can feel grateful for gratitude itself, rather than focusing on the objective world of form. See if you can hold gratitude for feeling grateful for gratitude. Notice that ceiling that you just bumped your head against. Try and stay there for a while. Say yes to all the good things that are flowing into your life experience. And visualize the universal flow. This is known as receiving mode. Lock it in and take it with you as you go, allowing this feeling of expansive thankfulness to saturate all that you touch. Repeat as needed. Heart smile. Shine some kind of attention into your heart space. Allow the corners of your mouth to curl up, whether you feel like smiling or not. Continue smiling into your heart, allowing your own love to melt away any resistance that may be there. Notice if the smile moves into your eyes or any other parts of the body. Imagine that this light that you are shining is clearing out dust and cobwebs. Know that this kind of attention is the awareness that you are. Then go about your day knowing that you can do this practice any time that you just want to feel good again. Microcosmic Orbit Modified For those who are interested in the deeper practices found in some of the more esoteric traditions, consider starting with this very special exercise. Begin by breathing into your belly with your tongue against the roof of your mouth. Keep it there for the entire exercise. Imagine that each deep breath is stirring up a deep orange fire in your belly, sometimes called Ching, Sechem, or Astral Light. This must be done before beginning the orbit. After a few minutes of stirring up the sacral energy, you should be able to feel a creative restlessness in your belly. Now it is time to circulate this fire throughout the body. The idea is to open invisible channels going up and down the spine, forming an egg-like shape around the body. Begin by drawing the fire down the base of the spine. Imagine that your focused breath is carrying this fire along as you go. Next, with focused breath, draw this fire up by clenching your buttocks muscles tightly and inhaling deeply through the nose from the perineum into the lower back. Without letting go of focus, as if trying to suck a cold, thick liquid through a straw, draw this fire up the back of the spine into your heart, inhaling and exhaling slowly and naturally as you go. Next, without releasing focus, continue to draw this fire on up into the head. Notice that your tongue is still pressed against the roof of your mouth. This is important as it connects the two channels for flowing yin and yang energies. Now that you have made it up the back of the spine, it is time to bring it down the front and into the belly where it will remain stored. So in the same way that you drew the fire upward, now allow your awareness and breath to guide it back down the front of the spine, allowing this fire to make its way through each part of the body until it ends up where it began. Perform this orbit several times in one sitting, and then rest once completed. It is recommended that you research Taoist inner alchemy and or kundalini yoga prior to trying this advanced practice. Warning. Please avoid practicing these exercises if operating heavy machinery, such as driving a vehicle. Safety and common sense should be considered before each practice. Conclusion. Whether you are new to leaf culture or a veteran, why not extract as much joy from the experience as possible? Once you begin seeing each cigar session as a rich spiritual experience, you may also begin to see other parts of your life this way. This is the nature of meditation. One day you are simply doing your daily practice and the next you notice a clear path to bliss consciousness in the middle of a fight or dinner or a boring meeting. No matter what you are doing, the more present you are, the more access you have to your innate joy. This is what meditation is about. And I believe this is what cigars truly represent for those of us with eyes to see. Enjoy the journey, my friends, and roast your stogie like a yogi.